I need more reverb on those drums in the air tonight. Human beings can intuitively recognize the physics of music. Whether it's sound waves, compression, frequencies, resonance, or tones, we know it when we hear it. What we're actually recognizing, though, is the science of how sounds move from one place to another. Here's five basic connections between music and physics that explain what we're hearing. Sound is made of different types of waves traveling through a medium, whether it's a gas, solid, or liquid. They're created by vibrating objects, like when a speaker moves outward and inward, pushing and moving away from the air next to it. Imagine, for instance, Survivor's Eye of the Tiger playing, and that part where it goes... It's booming through the speaker. The air molecules rebound with more than their normal energy and speed, transported as mechanical waves. Essentially, controlling these various sound waves is how we make music. And, you know, rise up to the challenge of our rivals. <laughs> Am I right? Okay, so that speaker, for a moment during its vibration, it has a greater than normal concentration of air molecules in the region next to it. This is a region of compression that moves outward as the energy from those molecules is transferred to others farther and farther away from it. These regions are naturally louder spots near the speaker, while the spots where the music is softer are regions of rarefactions. And when regions of compression and rarefactions come together, there is almost no sound at all. Dead spots like these can actually be designed into buildings by architects, especially when they use materials like wall padding that absorb sound waves. Each compression and the following rarefaction makes up what we call one cycle. These cycles are important because by measuring how many occur in a single second, we can determine the sound wave's frequency. This indicates how rapidly or slowly the medium is vibrating as the wave passes through it, especially when you're listening to something like Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles. Hertz is the unit of measurement we have for frequency. For instance, a single vibration per second is one hertz. Human ears are constructed so that they're really good at hearing fluctuations in frequency, detecting sounds as low as 15 hertz and as high as 20,000 hertz. We refer to these high and low ends as pitch, and when you play specific frequencies together, they can create appealing sounds. For instance, if there are two waves and the second has twice the frequency of the first, we denote this as a ratio of two to one, also known as an octave. instruments, you can create all kinds of different ratios, blending together the sound waves to make music that'll surely make you lose your mind. All the time. What's also important about frequency is that every material, whether it's wood, glass, or even steel, has a natural frequency at which it vibrates in resonance. Putting energy into any substance at its resonant frequency will force it to vibrate. When we're making music with instruments, the shape, size, and material determine what sounds it can create. Consider the horn section in Bob the Siege, Seeger's Shakedown. The sound waves that fit inside subsequently resonate and get louder. That's why tubas resonate at low frequency, while something like a piccolo resonates at a high piercing frequency.
Remember, all of this comes back to sound waves. Similar to waves in the water, they can collide together into forms with even lower depths. In music, this is called a standing wave, and it can be controlled in a consistent manner with an instrument to make a tone that repeats a specific frequency or a small number of related frequencies. This effect is when we start categorizing sounds as musical notes. Basically, they're the tones that our brains find the most pleasing. Like for example, Slash's amazing guitar solos in Guns N' Roses' November Rain. So, a C note, you know, do, a deer, a female deer, is a frequency of 264 hertz, while F, or fa, a long, long way to run, is 352 hertz, and those tones that we find unappealing, well, those thousands of random combinations of frequencies are what we call plain old noise. So what's your favorite song? Mine is Mandolin Rain by Bruce Hornsby because man, that emotion, it's amazing. Anyway, let us know your favorite in the comments after you visited our original article at HowStuffWorks.com about 10 connections between physics and music. And get on that frickin' reverb! you lose your mind <laughs> <laughs> you missed